ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies, as I said, I'm about to start slowing down with all of this. For the most part in particular because it is very frustrating that certain people just can't get rid of all the background noise, all of the static, all of the snow e sound and focus on the information. Ladies and gentlemen, get all that conspiracy stupidity. And I say conspiracy stupidity, there's nothing wrong with a conspiracy theory. There is, never has been anything wrong with a conspiracy theory. The problem comes when the conspiracy is not based on any sort of fact or documentation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know many people claim they got facts. Many people claim they got documentation. They ain't got S H I Z N I C or N I K. Shiznit. They ain't got shiznit. Sorry, it actually is a word, by the way. It was a word that many of us used in the 80s when we didn't want to curse. So, Shiznik, I looked it up yesterday. It is a word, believe it or not, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not a bad word. My mama told me that, well, she after she slapped me, okay? Anyway, um, I'm going to let him finish, okay? All right. I got to go now because he's about to slap me. I apologize for that. I they're here for the weekend, okay? So I I'm tired of sending them outside cuz it ain't it ain't 100 degrees outside. So sending them outside is like playground. You know, and I don't want to benefit them. I, when I send them outside, I want them to suffer. Hey, guys, I got something I want to tell you. We're going to get right into this thing because it's absolutely necessary. I need for all of you to pay attention to what's being said. Now you've been hearing me say in the last couple of videos, pay attention. Everybody knows that the smart people, and there are some smart people who listen to my videos. The smart people know, no, 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 not those smart people who I did a video saying this is for the smart people. No, not those smart people. See, those are the S, lowercase M A R T, capitalized M A R T. Those are the S smart people. You know, like Walmart, those are the S smart people, the stupid marks. That's where they go to get their information. So I ain't talking about those Sinmark people. I'm talking about the actual people who have a level of intelligence. They recognize that when I say, hey, pay attention, that I'm about to drop something that uh, is not common knowledge. Something that you can benefit from. Try to pay attention. You see how I said that three times already? That's to put emphasis on it. As soon as it pops up, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't hit it right. It may not want to pop up because of all the things going on in the background. So let me pause y'all for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> the moment I paused you, it popped back up. And then it popped back down because I sat up here and uh, hit it twice. Oh, my mama. Mama, he over here cursing again. Would you shut up with that stupid stuff? God, see, that's where y'all minds be going. Anyway, yeah, it's because I catch the words too, people, and it, I'm not saying it that way, but I know there's some idiot out there who's going to think I'm saying it that way. So I have to highlight it to make sure you understood that was not my intent. I don't, I don't talk like that. That's not my, it's not even my culture to talk like that. It's not my makeup. Other people talk like that, and I step away from them. I let them have that conversation privately. So, yes, I have to say that because individuals have construed from certain things I've said that I had a connotation other than the intent of it being delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk about something, okay? We're going to consider this case right here, and then we'll let you know about the case in a moment. With these considerations in mind, we conclude that the district court did not abuse its discretion in denying Rule 19B motion. Godnia would have had to have alleged an entirely new cause of action against the United States in order to bring suit in the court of claims. Indeed, Godnia would have had to have alleged something that maintains 
did not exist. A contract with the United States. Moreover, WAPA's claim of prejudice in discovery matters, as we have seen, adds little. For these reasons, it is well within the discretion of the district court to deny WAPA's motion. Now we're going to talk about the summary judgment. Pay attention to the summary judgment. In summary judgment for Gatnia, the district court reasoned that neither Caprani for Wapna nor Green for FEMA had the authority to enter into a contract on behalf of the parties that they represent. The district court concluded, however, that the actions of Capriani were later ratified by Bruno Vega and WAPA board, resulting in enforcement of the contract. On the other hand, the court reasoned that there is simply no evidence of ratification of the agreement by any other individual who could have ratified the contract under uh, entered into by Mr. Green. The court accordingly grants summary judgment on the issue favoring liability for Gatnia against WAPA. We exercise plenary review, public interest research in New Jersey versus Pyle. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention because this is the important part, okay? We's about to get there. What? Made three basic arguments in summary judgment for Gardnia was error. First, it points that evidence of FEMA officials ratified Green's actions and made binding the alleged contract between Green and Gatnia. Second, WAPA argues that in this emergency situation where the United States played a large role in negotiating and overseeing the contract, WAPA can recover if it proves an implied in fact contract, even if no contracting officer with specific authority to bind the United States approved the contract. See, an implied in fact contract or an implied consent contract. Now, pay attention, y'all. After Wapa maintained that even if it had contracted with Gatnia, there is evidence that the contract included a term that Gatnia would only be paid to the extent that Wapa was reimbursed by the government, precluding summary judgment for Gatnia. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and help y'all pay attention. The government enters into contract with the public through contracting officers. <clears throat> the government enters into contract with the public through contracting officers. The Federal Acquisition Regulation defines a contracting officer as a person with the authority to enter into, administer, and terminate contracts and make related determinations of findings. Pay attention, people. And the regulations also provide that contracts may be entered into and signed on behalf of the government only by contracting officers. Hold on. And that contracting officers may bind the government only to the extent of the authority delegated to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop right now. We're going to take you back to Stark versus the wonderful United States where Congress said under the Bradley Christopher Stark Act that the Attorney General had the authority. We're going to take you back to the wonderful New Hampshire right to travel law, New Hampshire House Bill 1778, under the purpose section where it talks about the government offer the contract. If you want to know more about the government offer the contract, go to saalimited.com. On SALimited.com, there is a government offer. Uh, offer to, yeah, I think it's called the government offer the contract or offer the contract. That information is right there. Ladies and gentlemen, what I am doing for you and showing you is that the government enters into contracts with the public all the time. So how do you know when the offer is a contract? An offer is always a contract. You may be seated. All rise. An offer is always a contract. Do you understand the charges I just read to you? You have the right to remain silent. Do you wish to waive your right? These are all offers, ladies and gentlemen. 
I showed you the video about Maxine Waters dealing with that Mnuchin or whatever his name is, and how she sat up there and said, I accept your offer. And she didn't. You were going to say, so I accept your offer and let the board know that we're going to be here for a moment. He's accepted our condition. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all offer and contract. That's the only way they can get around the trust. It's by entering into other contracts with you. That's why you have the right to disaffirmance. That's why on our website, we conditionally accept all offers. Every email, we conditionally accept all offers. Here are our conditions. Click on this link. You're going to love them. That's what we do. I'm tired, ladies and gentlemen, of this bull crap. Did you say, Mama, he said crap. Mama! Mama! You hear me? Mama! He said crap, Mama! I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, he, he, he ain't got nothing better to do but sit right here. Okay? So I apologize. I got to keep an eye on him anyway because he might go over there and touch both the red wire and the black wire on the solar system and, and short out my system. Oh, no, no. Don't worry about it. He can take it. Please. He done been through a whole lot more than that. Okay, probably got struck by lightning at least four times. Oh, five? Five times, y'all. Oh. Okay, so he, he can handle the electricity coming through there. He's a conductor. Um, I'm a conductor. Yes, I'm a conductor. Woohoo! Anyway, ladies, yes, I'm an idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this again because many of you are not getting this. Those of you with arbitration awards, have had the court tell you that your contracts were invalid because nobody signed it. Ladies and gentlemen, they know what the rule is. They know what the law is concerning contracts. You just saw that the argument by this party in this case right here stated to the court one thing. Hey, those mother entered into a contract because they consented. How did they consent? Because of their actions. Sorry, I can't find it. I know I passed it because we didn't go through all of that. Come on, let me let me find it again. Hold on. Is it here summary? No, that's summary judgment. Um, let's see. Behalf of the parties, district court. Nope, I don't see it, but I know that it was basically based upon the conduct. Okay, authority to enter a contract, and it was based upon the conduct that made the contract binding. And yes, a person's conduct. I, you know what? There's no need for me to keep showing you guys these case laws when I've already done it. You see, that's what I. That's what makes the videos long is because I'm continuing to show you guys the same stuff. Okay. That's that's what's happening. So what I need you guys to understand is that the government enters into contracts with private citizens all the time, the same as government enters into other contracts. Now, I put the government's corporate offer to contract with members of the public. That's how we found this case. Fitzroy! Fitzroy! Hey, Fitz! Get on over here! Fitzroy! Nergotnia versus Virgin Island Waters. Virgin Islands? What Virgin Islands got to do with this? That's not a government company. Exactly. But did you notice that FEMA and what? WAPA? I don't know who WAPA is, but I, I know who uh, I'm, I'm wanting to make sure it's not a federal housing. Come on, y'all. I done skipped it. I apologize. Because there's two, okay? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you don't have a right to enter into a contract on behalf of the United States. But if you have been elected into a position where you represent the United States, you do have that authority if it gives you that authority, okay? So this individual was bringing a case in the federal court of claims. 
And by doing so, he was saying, hey, hey, what y'all doing? Y'all can't do that to me. I run this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That That's what he was saying. So I knew what he was saying, you know, because I heard him say it, you know. FEMA! So this was more than likely, pay attention, this was more than likely during one of those water crises. Okay? This was more than likely during one of those water crises. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, do you know that there is nothing in the law for the courts to grant so stupid summary judgment? If you ask for a jury trial, the court has no jurisdiction to determine if there's a case or not a case. That's up to the jury. But when the judge acts like they call it a pretrial thing, there's no such thing as pretrial. They, that is just something they created. Go back and look at the original process. The person was brought before a magistrate. All right, we're scheduling trial. There was not all that uh, rambling and rambling at the beginning. It didn't take weeks and months and years. Person got arrested and the trial was scheduled. We got too many people now. That's why they many days and months and years. No, that's not why they do that. They do that because they have created all these statutes to bomb people. Okay. Just explaining to you guys why this video. It is very important that you understand that everything government does and offer. Several people who have been contacting me telling me about the IRS, that the IRS has been saying that they owe money. I said, well, then you need to respond back to the IRS. They said, I'm going to. So, no, you don't write the You respond back to them exactly what they requested. They're taxes. But pay attention to the letter. It's not saying that you owe taxes. It is suggesting that you may owe taxes. They're using a presumption since every taxpayer is required to file taxes yearly. So simply run them back and say, hey, uh, sorry, fellas, I hate you, and I'm sorry that you misunderstood that if I did not file taxes, that means that I was not required to file that year. Go back to your own website or go back to your own code, which you are supposed to follow, and recognize that taxpayers are required to file yearly if they owe taxes. Well, this year, I didn't owe any taxes that you're indicating, so I don't owe you mother... Uh, no, the last part. Just let them know that you don't owe any taxes, and if they could please provide some proof that you do owe taxes, and by all means, you'll pay it. So am I... I my uh, profits that year were below the poverty line. I'm not required to pay taxes if I'm below the poverty line. So if you just leave me alone, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why all of you, every single one of you, have the ability of filing for a tax return, pay too many taxes to begin with. That's why you get a refund, okay, because you overpaid. The same thing if you go to a store and they refund money is because you overpaid. That the bill was nineteen dollars. Dollar bill. They don't give you some change. Here's your loose change, mother. Okay. I don't want these pennies, mother. Okay. You go through at the store, but you go through the same thing with the so-called IRS because you overpay. They give you a refund, but they don't give you everything that's due. That's why I told people if you go exempt the first and your regular dependents at the end of that year in tax return, but you know during the year because you pay too much. Everything is average. Everything is presumption. So stop letting them presumpt you into paying more than is due. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. It is authorized to enter into contracts with public bodies, corporate, nations, and, pay attention, individuals. This is the Attorney General talking with you. Now, those of you who have children in school, the Texas, Texas Agency, Education Agency, not just for colleges, but also for schools, along will 
It's supposed to be what all other boards and agencies is directed to cooperate with the council. And this is the code. The council may accept gifts and grants in its own authority. May accept, <laughs> and that this council, it is authorized to enter into contract with public bodies, corporations, and individuals. They have the authority to enter into the contract. You'll find that the attorney general, which most of you are setting something to, has the right to enter into contract. The society enters into contracts with the public as well as the private, as private entities. Ladies and gentlemen, what society? Well, I don't know what society. Okay. All I know is that, oh, the historic society. Okay. Time. So enter into corporate endeavor agreements with each other and private associations. The reason why I'm showing you this, ladies and gentlemen, is because I have arbitration that I am working on at this very moment. I've been the the original. Doctor, I was getting ready to tell the person, uh, <laughs> you got to send me something because download it. It didn't download completely, and so a lot of the pages were missing. I mean, the pages were there, just nothing was on the page but numbers. Just off to the side, as if the paragraph numbers. And I figured, why would this person send this to me? Well, it wasn't their fault because it was recent, and it was recent. Oh, you know, it was recent, and uh, you know, if it wasn't recent, then you would have been out of warranty. <sighs> That's what I thought. Oh no, he he went in the room with his mother. All right. Let's go, y'all, so y'all can understand. It may enter to contracts, including contracts with other public entities. The government and everyone else enters into contracts. And by the way, if it is a government employee, okay, and they make an offer to contract on behalf of the government, they'll have the offer to negotiate if they're making such an offer in the first place. Okay, just thought I'd explain that to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I just wanted to point out that those of you who have these arbitration contracts and your contract is with a government agency, by all means, you need to recognize that you have the right to contract with that government agency. That is your right. Okay, so don't you forget it. Take care, everybody. 23 minutes and less than 10 seconds. Got to go. Adios.